in, continuing our past few Sunday study under the main title, Glorifying God in a Hostile World, I want us to look this morning for a few minutes uh, from the subject, A Heavenly Call in a Hostile World. A Heavenly Call in a Hostile World. As I attended the uh, Christian retreat a few weeks back, I was able to listen to all of the lessons presented. And I wanted to make sure that, as always, that when I go somewhere and, and get some good teaching, that I'm able to come back and share it with the church here. Amen. Mm -hmm. I believe it will be beneficial to you and a blessing in your life as it was for me uh, during my time of sitting under various preachers, uh, hearing them proclaim God's words. So I want to make sure that you are afforded that same blessing as I was able to consider as well as my wife. So this morning, I think the fourth uh, installment of this particular series of lessons, a heavenly call in a hostile world. A heavenly call in a hostile world. In 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse number 1, just to bring you up to where we need to be, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Understanding here that the church was in turmoil, uh, during this time, uh, have been scattered throughout all uh, different regions, uh, different areas, and they were going through some uh, persecutions, as has been the case in many times throughout the history of the church. The church was suffering persecution at the hands of those uh, who were in authoritative positions. Uh, at this time, the church was scattered out, and Peter's intent was to help the church to remain focused and to stay encouraged uh, while going through their storms. Uh, if you're going to go through storms of life, amen, that's going to happen. Yes, right. So it's important that as you're going through storms of life that you remain encouraged, right. that you keep your focus uh, towards the ending of that storm, recognizing that God, the same God who has allowed you to enter into the storm, it's the same God who will see you through the storm. Right. So here's Peter offering, offering encouragement to the, to the Christians. And if you drop down to verse number uh, 13, I just want you to understand that the church is scattered out, is, is, is scattered out at this time. But if you drop down to verse 13 for this morning uh, lesson, it says in verse 13, it's ready to hear Wherefore, uh, Peter says, Gird up the norms of your mind. He says to the church, uh, Be sober and Hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashion yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who, without respect of person, judge the court to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here, uh, is here in fear. For as much as you know that you would not be deemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, uh, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. The Subject this morning is a heavenly call in a hostile world. And as in the past, I want to just briefly remind you of that word hostile so you can get a better understanding of where I'm going and what my intent behind this lesson is this morning. And a lot of that has to do with understanding that word hostile. Yeah. That word hostile, uh, some related words are words like uh, contentious, uh, belligerent, unsympathetic, adverse, unfriendly, inhospitable, uh, someone who opposes you, uh, someone who acts hateful towards you, uh, someone who looks at you in an unfavorable light, someone who is contrary or maybe nasty or bitter or alien or opposite or militant or sour or cold. All these words carry the definition and the meaning of that word hostile. So that I have you to understand what I'm talking about when I talk about uh, being aliens in a hostile world. When I talk about how to respond to God's word in a 
hostile world. And have you understand that salvation is still available in a hostile world? And this morning, for a few minutes, a heavenly call in a hostile world. How do we respond to God in a hostile world? Until we learn to respond to God correctly, we will not be able to respond to one another correctly. Amen. Amen. So it's about having the right relationship and the right attitude toward God, responding to Him in a hostile world. Don't let the world dictate who you are. Amen. The intent is for us to shape and mold the world, not to be molded and shaped by the world. Amen. Remember also that as we remain Christians in the face of hostilities, it's important to understand that you are, you are aliens in a hostile world. Amen. Remember, we just sang the song, this world is not my home. Uh, we are aliens, we are foreigners, we are strangers, we are pimples, we are sojourners. This is not our home, we are just a passing through. Your traitor and my traitor are laid up somewhere beyond the door. So we are aliens in this world and our citizenship is what I want you to remember from that lesson. Our citizenship is in heaven. And as you remember that, and you look around you and you see the hostilities in the world. It's important to remember that salvation is still available in the hostile world. Right. Amen. Don't ever allow your mind to be pulled so far from Christ that you start to believe that salvation no longer even exists. But let me tell you this morning, salvation is still available in a hostile world. In a world full of hostilities, salvation is still available. The same blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. The same power that blood, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The same power associated with that blood that was in effect on the cross of Calvary is still in full effect today. Amen. It still has the ability to affect a man's life, a woman's life, a boy's life, a girl's life, to change their life for the better. Amen. Amen. Salvation is still available in a hostile world. No matter what the world wants you to, to believe in, regardless of what all Satan throws at you, salvation is still available. Mm -hmm. And this morning, just a few minutes, a heavenly call in a hostile world. A heavenly call in a hostile world. In case you haven't noticed, we don't live in a perfect world. Mm. And since we don't live in a perfect world, I want you to use your imagination this morning just a little bit. Imagine that we were living in a perfect world. Mm. A world where there's no sickness. Right. No such thing as cancer. Mm. A world where there's no, there's, no, there's no dying. No loss of loved ones. A world <coughs> where everybody gets along. Mm. Well, mm. Yeah. Take the imagination on it. Mm. Imagine living in such a world. <coughs> in case you haven't noticed, that's not the world we live in. Right. We don't live in a perfect world. And since we don't live in a perfect world, God has called on us to be different. Amen. God has called on his children to be different. We speak about being God's peculiar people. His special people, mm -hmm. his set apart people, his chosen people. He has called on us to be different. In Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, as I delve into the lesson this morning for a few minutes. In Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, there's that word again, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And Paul goes on saying, be not conformed to this world. This world is not my home. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Because we don't live in a perfect world, God has called on us. He 
send a call out, the gospel call, all who obey that gospel call can become children of God. And then as children of God, we have a heavenly calling. That's right. I'm sure what this heavenly calling is. But it involves being not conformed to this world. It involves being transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's going to take some mind work. Why do we have so many difficulties sometimes? Because we don't want to take time to use our minds. Right. Amen. Child of God is struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling. But brother, when's the last time you studied God's word? When's the last time you went to God in prayer? Hmm. When's the last time you attended worship service? When's the last time you attended a Bible study? When's the last time you hung around somebody that's just a fellow Christian? All right. See, our minds has a lot to do with this heavenly calling. Amen. Uh, in order to not be uh, conformed to this world, it requires a renewing of your mind. He's called us out of darkness to the kingdom's good son. And then he has given us this call to be different. The call he has for us is to be different. Mm -hmm. We are to be different than the world. Jesus said to such a, uh, a degree that you can't help but see the difference that we should make. Jesus says, you are the salt mm -hmm. of the earth. Mm -hmm. Jesus pointed out, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. A city that sits on a hill and mm -hmm. cannot be hid. Jesus says, let your light. You see, he called on us to be, to be different. Amen. That heavenly call is a call, a banking and a calling to you and I as Christians, but those who are children of God, it's a call for us to be different. With the soul of the earth, with the light of the world, let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify God. Something different about you. Amen. Come on, come on. And just because you live in the house of our world, I think God don't know what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. He says, not one sparrow falls from the sky without God knowing it. Amen. Even the very hairs of your head are numbered. Do you think God don't know what's going on in the world? Amen. But you know what? In spite of what's going on in the world, he says, I want my people to obey this heavenly call. Mm -hmm. You see, there's the gospel call that gets you into Christ. Amen. When you obey the gospel call, you're baptized into Christ. Upon being obedient to the gospel, you're baptized into Christ. But then there's a heavenly call. Mm -hmm. And there's a heavenly call, even in the midst of a hostile world. This call, God wants and expects for us to obey. This word holy, it means to be set apart, a consecrated, a dedicated for the service of. God wants us to be set apart, to be consecrated, to be dedicated for his work. Let's talk about this heavenly call. A heavenly call in a hostile world. Let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. He says here, Peter says, wherefore, gird up. The Lord's of your mind. See, he's it's talking it's talk about the mind here, right? He's talking about the mind. Then he says, be sober. That involves what? That involves the mind. Uh -huh. And then he says, and hope. What's hope going to, uh, uh, what's, what's the idea of hope going to build? It's all dealing with the mind. He says, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you as the revelation of Jesus Christ. He says, as obedient children, not fashion yourselves according to the form of lust in your ignorance, but as he which have called you is holy. He said, I'm holy. You be holy. That's a heavenly call, y'all. That's a heavenly call that God wants us to obey after obeying the gospel of Christ. He wants us to obey the heavenly call where he says, you be holy. As I am holy. He says, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of what? In your whole life. Uh -huh. In every aspect of your life, 
He expects for you to be holy. Why? Because he who has called you is holy. He says, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Listen, God don't work on impossibilities from the standpoint of what we think is impossible. Amen? Amen. Right, so man, it's impossible for me to be holy. That's only you look at it from your standpoint. When God says, or Peter says, be ye holy as he is holy, and it says, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. That tells me that I can be holy. I should not shun or run from the idea in my mind that I can be holy. God would have said it if it wasn't possible for me to achieve. And the possibility only comes when I stay with what does say the Lord. He says, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. The heavenly call is he wants you to be holy because he is holy. A heavenly call in a hostile world. How is it? The Christian asks the question. How can I be holy when all around me is not holy? How, how can I be holy when, when people don't like me? They don't like me. How can I be holy? How can I be holy when, 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 when people lie on me? How can I be holy when the forces of Satan are raging against me daily, every day? They are Satan doing something in front of me. How can I be holy? Because that's your call. That's your call. That is your duty. That is your responsibility to be holy. He says, because I am holy. That's your call. That's how you can do it. Because that's what you were called to do. If God says be holy, that's assured that you can be holy. If he says live a holy life, you can live a holy life. That's right. We make excuse after excuse after excuse of why we can't do the right thing instead of talking about all the reasons why we should be doing the right thing. Amen. Heaven that call, he wants you to be holy because he is holy. That's your call. In verse 13, Peter says, 1 Peter 1, 13, Peter says, Wherefore, Gird up the loins of your mind. You have to understand that because somebody tells you to gird up the, you know, the loins of your mind, you look at them like, okay? You have to understand what that means. And the ones Peter wrote to, they would fully understand this. Uh, during the time of battle, soldiers uh, made sure that they had everything tied down. And even those who were not soldiers, they understood what it meant to gird up. That's right. uh, the men would wear robes and in that culture, and the women would wear robes as well, but maybe longer. But, but when they get ready to, they, they got to move in a, in, a, in a quick manner. Amen. Mm -hmm. When work is required, when it's time to, to, to do something, to get something done uh, in, in a manner that necessitates speed, they, they, they would take a belt That's right. and they would tie it. And what are they doing? They're getting things out of place that may be a distraction for them. They're getting things out of, the place, out of place that may cause them to be distracted. So when someone says, gird up your mind, when Peter says, gird up the laws of your mind, he's saying, you got to get distractions out of the way. you got to tie off all those loose ends. What's keeping me? What's preventing me from uh, answering that heavenly call to be holy as he is holy, I got too much stuff mm -hmm. distracting me. Uh -huh. So Peter says, gird up the loins of your mind. Man, get that stuff out of the way. Get that stuff under control. Uh -huh. Make it manageable so that you don't miss what does say of the Lord. The Lord has something for you to do, but you can't do it because you got so much stuff in the way. Peter says, gird up. The laws of your mind. Get rid of all those loose ends. And here's something for us to think about, brothers and sisters. Let's stop trying to be more like the world 
that the world is like the world. Amen. Sometimes we spend so much time trying to just blend in. All right. Stop spending so much time trying to just blend in. That was not God's focus and intent. When he called you through the gospel, he gave you a heavenly call, and the heavenly call is to be holy as he is holy. He don't want you to be like everybody else. Right. Man, people kill me with these different fads that come along and stuff. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, so back in our day, brother, up here back in my day, you didn't walk around, you, you wanted your hair to look nice. <laughs> Yo, if you had bad hair, you didn't want to go to school, eh, man? I was going to I spent many nights in front of Europe, patting my hair and stuff, man. Get that, get, take it down next morning, boom, big old folk. Mm -hmm. I found a car that they didn't mix with, like this and what in the front of the rain. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I just sweat the rain. You know, you sweat it, went back in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was late in the morning time. Before school, I had to pay it. I thought one time it shrunk back in. I had to pay it, I had to pay it before school. But the people just. And then they say, well, man, you know what? I'm being, I'm being, I'm being unique. I'm being, why are you just doing like everybody else? Mm -hmm. God don't want us to just be like everybody else. Right. His intent, his purpose through the heavenly call is for us to be different. That's, right. That's why he says, gird it up. <clears throat> the Lord's in mind. Get rid of those distractions. Stop trying to be more worldly than the worldly person is. And the reason why we have so much trouble, I'm going to just say it. The reason why we have so much trouble yes. living up to the heavenly call <coughs> is because our minds are not right. right. Oh. Our minds are not right. That's why Paul says, I mean, Peter says, so y'all get mad at Peter. I'm going to say what Peter said. Peter said, gird up the loins of your mind. Peter said, get your mind right. Uh -huh. Can you do it by yourself? Nope. Nah. That was never the intent. If we can do it by ourselves, <coughs> the greatest injustice that ever happened was in Jesus Christ died on the cross. That's the greatest injustice that ever happened in our history if we could get it right by ourselves. Because there was no need for him to die. But in order for us to get our minds right, we have to have the mind of Christ. It took his death on the cross in order that we may have this invitation from God to obey the gospel of Christ. And then after obeying the gospel of Christ, he talks about this heavenly call. He says, wherefore, gird up the minds, uh, the loins of your mind. And the reason why we can't live holy because he says, the call is be holy, what, is I holy? Mm -hmm. But I know we can do it, because if we keep God in his right place in our minds, Isaiah says in Isaiah 26, 3, something along the lines of this, in Isaiah 26, 3, it says, he will keep you in perfect peace. Somebody says, man, my mind just be all over the place. That's your fault. Amen. You got God saying, hey, be holy as I am holy. He's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, and he assures us through Isaiah the prophet, he's saying he will keep you in perfect peace. Some people mind that it's all over the place and never at peace. Christians I'm talking about now. I'm talking about Christians this morning. Minds are all over the place. Why is that? How is that? When his word says he will keep you in perfect peace if you stay your mind on him. Isaiah 26, 3. I, I, I need, I need y'all to see this. But some, I'm not just getting a part of it. I need you to see it. Isaiah 26, 3. Because I'll keep you. He says, Thou will keep.